Closed captioning of this program is brought to you by Pioneers. Energy for life. to hold on to. Holy moly is right. <laughs> you know, if you want a really challenging type of fishing, where you think it's easy, because what we're doing here, we're going along these channels, and we're looking down and we're spotting the bowfin, a lot of people call these dogfish, and you think that they would hit anything. First of all, they don't hit. It's like oh. you gotta jingle it in front of them. They just, they just nibble it, almost. And then when they go for it, you set the hook, you either miss them, or when you do hook them, they start, how do you describe it? They kind of go sideways through the water and like do missile launches. What they kind of remind me is an alligator. They just keep rolling and yeah, rolling yeah, and rolling. Yeah, you're right. And then they get off. So our percentage, what's our percentage? 10%, 20%? I'm gonna see if you hold the net up. I'm gonna okay. try to get my hand underneath its gill plate. Okay. There's not much to hold on to. So a lot of people don't even know these fish exist. Look, you threw the hook out. Good thing, we got them in the net. So they're, they're such quiet fish that go along the bottom. They're almost like a snake. That's the only way I can describe it. And you know what, they got powerful jaws, so I gotta be really careful here. Normally I wear a glove. I'm trying to get out, you know what, there's not much of a, a gill plate to hold on to. It's a very small gill plate. So he might fall into the net. Okay, so there's a bowfin, or dogfish, right there. And we've seen some that have been twice this length. So they look a little bit like a snake, very large scales. You see that spot? Well, he has a beautiful marking, that yeah, spot Yeah, because right I have there. one. You know what I think for predators, they probably think that that's their eye yep. when they're smaller. But if you look at their head, it's like a snake head. I think it like a python mm -hmm. or something, you know? And they're so smooth. Now these are very old fish. I mentioned that earlier. I think one of the reasons why they have such hard mouths, they remind me of a gar or a sturgeon. Mm -hmm. That's why we can't get the hooks in them. And they've got a lot of teeth. So boy, we got one. Okay, I'm gonna put it back in the net. Okay, James, let's get him back in the water. We got him in there, and I'm gonna try to get him out of the net. You know, these things look like they're dopey, but they're so stealthy. You're gonna see this guy take off in a minute. Hopefully I can show you the colors here. Look at how beautiful they are. Cool. Very goldy green. If you see the vegetation that's underneath this fish, they are so camouflage. You can see how wide they are. So I'm gonna try just letting go. Hopefully he'll stay suspended on these weeds. Ah, oh, he's gonna go down. Oh man, he's taking the weeds down with him. That was awesome. Oh, beautiful fishing paddle. Now, you know, we started, James was using pretty heavy outfits. You're using flipping rods. Flipping and you still rods. have them, right? Yep. And I think you brought one other bait caster and a spinning rod. I was using way too light a gear. Mm -hmm. I was using medium heavy action bass gear. So what I've done, I've switched up. So the two outfits that I've got right now, rigged and loaded, this bait caster is, is a, Split grip, it's an R-type, and it's actually rated from 20 to 50 pound test. Well, that's a good run. I haven't missed a fish on it yet. Not yet. <laughs> With this one, the Magnum, I think it's rated like 10 to 30. So it's a pretty stiff spinning rod. with a big spinning wheel. I actually use this in salt water. And I missed one fish and yeah, hooked one fish. Now look at the size of the hooks that we're using because we don't want to have deflection. That means that when you go to set the hook, that hook opens up a little bit and it slides out of its mouth. So we're both using like double X strong worm hooks and large hooks because these things have big heads and big mouths. But you know what? Even with this heavy gear, we're still only hooking up like 10 to 20% of the fish. Boy, it's really so hard. I'm open for there. ideas. Any <laughs> ideas? <laughs> Just hopefully they we, keep biting. We can see everything. I mean, yeah. you can see the fish, you can see it move towards yeah. you, you can see it open its mouth and close it, you set you the hook. You can watch the whole, spray, the whole strike. You just, you know, you give it all you got and sometimes it's not enough. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can find some more active fish. Let's go. You know, there's so many different types of plastics on the market. Some are long action tails, worms, um, all kinds of minnow imitation, a lot of crawdads. Some are meant to be tipped on a flipping jig or put on a spoon. Others rig Texas rig like I have here. What we found fishing for these bowfin is that you don't want a long plastic. I started off with about a six inch worm and it just didn't seem to work. 
and James had really good luck on a crawfish imitation, only about four, four to five inches long. So what I did was switch to a crawfish imitation. This one is about five inches long, and you can see that I've rigged it Texas rig with a screw lock sinker. So I'm just gonna unscrew it for you so you can see it. So for those of you that use a lot of um, plastic worms or plastics and you use these bullet sinkers, in the old days you used to put a toothpick in there, and some people still do. I like using the screw locks where you actually push it in, turn it, and then there's no way that it can come out even after you land a fish. But the line still goes through it right to the hook. The hook is very large, so it's actually the length of this five inch piece of plastic. And what we found was that we had more hookups if we kept the hook just riding on the plastic. So you see it there, it's totally exposed, but you slide the plastic up so that it's parallel to the plastic, but I can still catch my skin on it. If we put the hook inside like you would normally for bass and other species of fish, a lot of times we miss the fish. I have a feeling it's because the inside of the bow Fin's mouth has no contours. There's no jaw contour. It's all smooth. So when it does close its mouth on the plastic and you pull on it, there isn't a jaw that hangs down or that sticks up from the bottom where it can catch on, break through the plastic and hook into the fish. So definitely if you're going to try it, your shot at getting both in, make sure that the hook is exposed. Now most of the plastics that I was using were Trigger X and that's them here in all different configurations. Now there are a lot of scented plastics on the market but Trigger X is actually pheromone impregnated. And if you ever want to smell something interesting, just open one of their Ziplocs take a whiff. I can't exactly explain it to you, but it's a very interesting smell. And you can see that this is the three inch, it's the flipping craw, but I also rigged this up. I had my first few fish on the little three inch flipping craw, just with a Texas rig hook and a little bullet sinker. I think for the bowfin, the smaller and more compact your plastic, the best chance is that for you to actually hook that fish. Now tubes are always good to use. We've had a few fish on tubes and then also smaller pieces of worms like these Trigger X worms here. These are about five or six inch but we were cutting them down. So all of these will work well. The key is to spot these fish and try to get your grub in front of them even to the point of shaking it. So they seem to be very dopey. They're like a snake. They'll sit there. Sometimes their head is inside the weeds and you got to drop your grub right in front of them through the weeds, other times they're moving. But it seems like they won't chase a bait. Sometimes they'll move three, four, five inches and you know that they're excited and their dorsal fin starts to wave like this. And sometimes their little pectorals start to move. And then they'll just come up and snap it. And that's a real problem because they don't hit and go like most fish. So when they snap at it and just sit there, that's when you gotta set the hook. Otherwise you miss the fish. I'll tell you, there are fish that very few people know, but they're a lot of fun and very challenging to catch.